Welcome back to the Easy Med channel where medical and science topics are made easy. The goal of the channel is to save you time in studying and help you throughout your career by giving you clear explanations for different topics. And every Easy Med video has an Easy Med blog linked down below in the description that correlates with the video and provides you with all the notes you need to know. So make sure to subscribe to the channel, that way you don't miss out on future videos and blogs that make topics easy. In this video today, we're going to go over the main anatomical structures of the heart. And by the end of this video, you're going to be able to easily label this diagram. We've got some simple tricks that will help you remember all the different structures. So let's get started. We're first going to use this cartoon diagram of the heart to walk through all of the main anatomical structures. This will help simplify things. Then once we've gone over all the main structures using this picture, we'll go back to that first diagram and you'll see you'll be able to label the entire diagram without difficulty. Let's start with the chambers of the heart. You'll notice that there are four main chambers labeled one through four on the diagram. And the way we're going to simplify this is we're going to turn the heart into a square and we're going to divide that square into four different boxes. These boxes will represent the chambers of the heart and you can see that they're labeled to correlate with the diagram. Next, you'll notice that the heart can be divided into two sides. First, we have the right side shown in blue in the picture, and this includes chambers one and two. And then we have the left side shown in red, which includes chambers three and four. Next, we can divide these boxes or chambers even further. The same way we divided the two on the right from the two on the left, we can divide the two on the top from the two on the bottom. The two chambers on top are known as the atria, and this will include boxes one and three. And the two chambers on the bottom are known as the ventricles, and this includes boxes two and four. Now the easy way to remember the atria are located on top and the ventricles are located on the bottom is to think of the alphabet. A comes before V, so the atria are located superiorly and the ventricles are located inferiorly. Now we have created this two by two table which will help us label the different chambers of the heart. Box number one is located in the right upper portion, so this represents the right atrium. The second box is also on the right side, but now we're in the lower region, so this represents the right ventricle. For the third box, we go back up top, so we know it's going to be an atrium, but now we're on the left side, so this represents the left atrium. Lastly, box number four is located in the left lower region. This is the left ventricle. Now that we have a good understanding of the four chambers of the heart, let's move on to the four main valves. The function of these valves is to prevent the backward flow of blood into the previous chamber. You'll first notice a valve located between the right atrium and the right ventricle. This is known as the tricuspid valve. Now we're going to be talking about the blood flow through the heart a little bit later on in this video and also in a different video, but when that right ventricle squeezes and pumps blood forward, the tricuspid valve prevents the backflow of blood into the right atrium. We have a similar valve on the left side located between the left atrium and the left ventricle. This is known as the mitral valve, sometimes also referred to as the bicuspid valve. In similar story, when the left ventricle squeezes and pumps blood forward, the mitral valve is going to prevent the backflow of blood into the left atrium. Now because the tricuspid valve and the mitral valve are located between the atria and ventricles, they're also referred to as atrioventricular valves. Now how can you remember the tricuspid valve is located on the right side and the mitral valve is located on the left side? Well I have three different tricks for you, so pick your favorite one and use it. The first one is try it before you buy it. This will help you remember that the tricuspid valve comes before the bicuspid or the mitral valve. The second trick is to take the word try and tricuspid and those three letters also appear in the word right, so this will help you remember that the tricuspid valve is located on the right side of the heart. The third and final trick is to remember the different lobes of the lungs. So the right lung has three lobes, and the tricuspid valve, which tri represents three, is located on the right side of the heart. And then the left lung has two lobes, and the bicuspid valve, which bi indicates two, is located on the left side of the heart. So hopefully one of those three tricks will stick with you and it will help you remember that the tricuspid valve is on the right and the mitral valve is on the left. Let's now move on to the final two valves. The next valve you'll notice is located on the other side of the right ventricle. It's where blood exits the right ventricle and enters the main pulmonary artery or pulmonary trunk. Now we're going to be talking about the pulmonary artery shortly, so don't worry about those right now, but it will help you remember that the name of this valve is the pulmonary valve, also known as the pulmonic valve. And the function of the pulmonary valve is to prevent the backward flow of blood into the right ventricle. There is a similar valve on the left side, located between the left ventricle and the aorta. Again, we're going to talk about the aorta shortly, so don't worry about that right now, but it will help you remember that the name of this valve is the aortic valve. And the function of the aortic valve is to prevent the backflow of blood from the aorta to the left ventricle during diastole when that left ventricle is in a low pressure state filling with blood from the left atrium. 
I do want to point out that there is a previous EasyMed video where we talk about the cardiac cycle. More specifically, we talk about how the pressures change in the atrium ventricles during systole and diastole and why those valves open and close. So that might be a good video to reference if you want more information on the valves. I'll link the video down below in the description and you can also find it in the cardiology playlist as well. So now we have a good understanding of the four chambers and the four main valves of the heart. There are only four more structures we're gonna talk about in this video. And those are the main blood vessels that allow blood to enter and exit the right side of the heart and enter and exit the left side of the heart. In order to get a better understanding of these structures, we're briefly gonna look at the blood flow through the heart. First, all of the deoxygenated blood in the body will drain into the venous system and enter the right side of the heart, specifically the right atrium. The blood will then travel from the right atrium through the tricuspid valve and enter the right ventricle. The blood will then exit the right ventricle through the pulmonary valve and enter the lungs to be oxygenated. So the main goal of the right side of the heart is to deliver deoxygenated blood to the lungs so it can become oxygenated. An easy way to think about the function of the right side of the heart is it delivers blood right to the lungs. The oxygenated blood then travels from the lungs and enters the left side of the heart, specifically the left atrium. Blood will then travel from the left atrium through the mitral valve and enter the left ventricle. The blood will then exit the left ventricle through the aortic valve to be delivered to the rest of the body. So the main goal of the left side of the heart is to deliver oxygenated blood to the rest of the body. An easy way to remember the function of the left side of the heart is that it delivers blood that has left the lungs. So that was a really quick overview of the blood flow through the heart. The next EasyMed video is actually about the blood flow through the heart where we go in much more detail. And there's also some simple tricks to remember all of this. The video should be released sometime this week. So by the time most of you are watching this, it should be out. Feel free to go over there and get more information. It'll be in the cardiology playlist. But for the purpose of this video, we now have enough information to talk about those final structures. The first two structures are responsible for carrying deoxygenated blood from the body to the right side of the heart, specifically the right atrium and they're known as the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava. They're easy to remember because we know any blood vessel carrying blood to the heart is a vein, and you can use the name vena cava to help you remember that. And then the superior vena cava is obviously going to be located superiorly. It carries deoxygenated blood from the upper body to the right side of the heart. The inferior vena cava is located inferiorly, and it carries deoxygenated blood from the lower body to the right side of the heart. Next, we have the blood vessel responsible for delivering the deoxygenated blood from the right side of the heart to the lungs. And this is known as the main pulmonary artery or pulmonary trunk. And the main pulmonary artery splits into the right pulmonary artery and left pulmonary artery. We're gonna see more of this in the next diagram. The name pulmonary artery is easy to remember because it carries blood to the lungs. So that will help you remember pulmonary. And we know that any blood vessel carrying blood away from the heart is an artery. Typically, arteries carry oxygenated blood, but the pulmonary artery is unique in that it carries deoxygenated blood to the lungs. Next, we have the pulmonary veins, and they're responsible for carrying oxygenated blood from the lungs to the left side of the heart, specifically the left atrium. The name pulmonary vein is easy to remember because they carry blood from the lungs, so this will help you remember pulmonary. And again, we know blood vessels that carry blood to the heart are veins. Typically, veins carry deoxygenated blood, but the pulmonary veins are unique in that they carry oxygenated blood from the lungs to the left side of the heart. We'll see a better picture of the pulmonary veins in the next diagram. The final blood vessel is the aorta, and it's responsible for delivering oxygenated blood from the left side of the heart to the rest of the body. So now that we have gone over the main anatomical structures of the heart, let's go back to that first diagram, and you're going to find you'll be able to label the main parts. Let's start with the chambers of the heart, beginning with this one indicated by the star. Try to guess which structure this is and hit pause in the video if you need more time. It's located on the right side of the heart and it's in the upper region. We know that the atria are on top and the ventricles are on the bottom, so this is the right atrium. We're now going to move to the lower section of the heart, so try to guess which structure this is. We're still on the right side and again the lower chambers are the ventricles, so this is the right ventricle. Moving to the left side of the heart, we're again in the upper region, so this is the left atrium. And as we move down to the lower chamber, we're still on the left side, so this will be the left ventricle. Let's now move on to the main blood vessels, beginning with the ones indicated by the stars. Again, try to guess the structure and hit pause in the video if you need more time. These blood vessels are carrying blood to the right atrium, so we know they're going to be veins. And in this case, they're the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava. And their function is to deliver deoxygenated blood from the body to the right side of the heart. Moving on to the next structure, try to guess which one it is. We have a blood vessel that's exiting the right ventricle and going to the lungs. 
We know it's going to be an artery because it's a blood vessel that's carrying blood away from the heart and it's carrying blood to the lungs. So it's going to be the pulmonary artery. Specifically where the star is, that's the pulmonary trunk or the main pulmonary artery. And then it splits into the right and left pulmonary arteries. And the function of them is to deliver deoxygenated blood from the right side of the heart to the lungs to become oxygenated. Moving on to the next structures, we have blood vessels that are delivering blood from the lungs to the left atrium. So we know they're going to be veins because they're carrying blood toward the heart. And because they're coming from the lungs, they're going to be the pulmonary veins. And the function of them is to deliver oxygenated blood from the lungs to the left side of the heart, specifically the left atrium. The final main blood vessel is one that is exiting the left ventricle and delivering blood to the rest of the body. Again, we know it's an artery because it's carrying blood away from the heart. And in this case, it's the aorta. The function of the aorta is to deliver oxygenated blood to the rest of the body. Lastly, we're gonna go over the four main valves, starting with the one indicated by the star. Again, try to guess the structure. This valve is located between the right atrium and the right ventricle. So it's going to be the tricuspid valve. And the function of the tricuspid valve is to prevent the backflow of blood from the right ventricle to the right atrium during systole when that right ventricle is pumping blood forward into the pulmonary arteries. Moving on to the next valve, this is located on the left side between the left atrium and the left ventricle. So it's going to be the mitral valve or the bicuspid valve. And the function of the mitral valve is to prevent the backflow of blood from the left ventricle to the left atrium during systole when the left ventricle is pumping blood forward into the aorta. And you can remember the tricuspid valve is on the right and the mitral valve is on the left using the saying, try it before you buy it. Or you can use the lungs. The right lung has three lobes and the tricuspid valve is located on the right. The left lung has two lobes and the mitral valve is on the left. The next valve is located between the right ventricle and the main pulmonary artery or pulmonary trunk. So this is going to be the pulmonary valve. And its function is to prevent the backflow of blood from the pulmonary arteries to the right ventricle during diastole when that right ventricle is in a low pressure state, filling with blood from the right atrium. The final valve is on the left side, located between the left ventricle and the aorta. So this is going to be the aortic valve. And the function of the aortic valve is to prevent the backflow of blood from the aorta to the left ventricle during diastole when the left ventricle is in a low pressure state, filling with blood from the left atrium. So now you're able to label the main anatomical structures of the heart, and hopefully this video made it easy for you. If you found the video useful, please give it a quick like or comment down below. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future medical and science topics made easy. As always, I'm going to link down below in the description the EasyMed blog that correlates with this video. There you can find all of the notes you need to know. Thanks for watching, and I hope you check out future videos.